Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Practical Performance Podcast, episode number one, which is just an intro about us and why we made this podcast. So we have created this, uh, myself, Nick and Joe, to help bring science and research to you as athletes, primarily triathletes, runners, swimmers and cyclists. So we're helping debunk a lot of myths out there. We're helping you train your best, stay injury free, um, perform at your best. And also we're just here to have a bit of fun and share our, our knowledge. So we're going to introduce ourselves and a little bit about us. We can start with Joe. Joe, tell us about yourself. I wondered who you were going to start with then. Uh, first. So, yeah, I'm, my name's Joe Skipper. I'm a professional triathlete. I've uh, been racing professional since 2012. And uh, yeah, met Kate and Nick when I, well, when we were racing, we were racing as pros together, me and Nick. And uh, I met Kate out in Kona, I think, weren't it, when you were out there racing. And then since then, I've got involved with the strength uh, and conditioning when I went over to Perth, Australia, and uh, really met... Um, you two back there and uh yeah that really brought me on but yeah I'm a professional triathlete still competing and uh going into what will probably be my 13th season as a professional uh next year Joel. sounds good Joe's very humble I mean when you say <laughs> yes. professional triathlete Joe let's pump your tires a little yeah. bit you've got some serious um <laughs> accolades and um achievements under your belt haven't you just share um share a little bit about some of the you know the um the achievements that you've had in the past well, best ones probably uh, finishing in the top ten three times in Kona. That's uh, definitely up there with the highlights because all the top guys are there on the day. And then winning uh, uh, quite a few Ironman. So New Zealand, I've won Ironman UK, Wales, uh, Chattanooga uh, in America, uh, Arizona, Florida. Quite a few, quite a few. But need to get back onto the top step. It's been a while since I was last on there. Um, so working hard to try and <laughs> to try and make that happen again in twenty twenty five. You're just, very, you're very just sharing cool. it around, Joe. You're just being a gentleman. <laughs> exactly. That's that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> you know, I think the race that, uh, in my personal opinion, that sticks with me about Joe's racing was Ironman Wales. In, it was only a couple of years ago when you were quite far back off the, the bike and you just ran the house down with, like, everyone would – put the odds against you uh what was it something happened to you at the start of the race wasn't it and then you just caught up to them so much and then had such a good run and that to me is like joe skipper as an athlete you're just determined and you just go so i think that's that, summarizing that was race. my best i reckon that that was my best ever performance in an ironman that was you know yeah. like it was just a shame that it wasn't a televised uh race and it and like it wasn't like a world championships but i ran 237 on that course like official officially like for the full marathon and you know nick that course is long isn't it like because you've done it it's, it's like yeah, 43 yeah. kilometers well, it's, epic. it's yeah. hilly isn't it, as it well? is. like, really it's hilly 600 meters of climbing 43 kilometers so like 800 meters long um i did 237 i've never had as good a run as that since or before that i don't know where it came from but i'd love to um uh get a fast one no it's actually meant to be one of the slowest marathons in it like courses out there but it's actually where i've got my pv so uh definitely should be capable of running faster but just need to do it <laughs> yeah I what's that? Tracking, we were tracking that day weren't we Kate? yeah we, we were kind of looking at the we tracker were. joe when you were on the bike having your um your mechanical issues and we were wondering what what was oh, going no. on and um i think when we saw you coming out of t2 we we're thinking oh blimey this is <laughs> this is not looking too flash but that was a good yeah. day we had we had fun following that one. Uh, yeah, because I remember sitting at home being like, oh, it's all the strength training he's been doing. <laughs> 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 Trying to claim my little slice of glory in your race. <laughs> I, I was doing, I wa yeah. did religiously do it twice a week in the build up to that because I met, I remember I was in Font Romeo training at Altitude and there was a few of us and we were doing it every Monday and Friday. Uh, and they were quite big sessions as well. So I was religiously doing that. And then when I went out to Kona that year, I remember going to the gym specifically to do like strength and conditioning and uh I had I had a really good like six month period where I was like twice a week, twice a week, just didn't miss it at all. And I think it de definitely paid off. And I think on them kind of hilly courses, that's where you really notice it, isn't it? Because you can fatigue a lot on the downhills, can't you? And you've got to be so strong on the uphills to keep the pace going. So I definitely did notice the gains from doing all that strength and conditioning, I think, because generally I'm not actually that good on the hills. So it's really surprising how I run that quick on such a hilly course. 
Well, there you go. I'll definitely claim it then. There you In go. my mind, yeah, I claimed it. it all these years, <laughs> but now I have confirmation straight from him. <laughs> well, I mean, you mentioned strength and conditioning there a couple of times, Joe, and that probably ties into maybe, Kate, you introducing yourself because that's kind of what's tied us all, the three yes. of us together now, isn't it, is, um, is strength training. <laughs> yes. So I'm um, Kate. I'm a an Aussie, uh, but Nick and I now currently live in Seychelles. Uh, if you don't know where that is, just Google image it and you'll get plenty of tropical, beautiful beaches. Um, very much like Australia, just uh, more tropical. I did a double degree in physiotherapy and sports science and I worked in private practice physio for a little while and I just wasn't exactly where my passion was. I always loved working with athletes. I was a triathlete myself and I really enjoyed working with endurance athletes for tying in injury prevention and performance and strength training uh, was always my passion. So I, I quit my traditional physio job because I was just frustrated at it. Um, and enrolled in my research. And that's where I undertook my PhD, looking at strength training in endurance athletes, predominantly triathletes. And we looked at strength training to improve performance in swimming, cycling and running with some amazing results. Um, and, you know, I based all of my research around things that, that work and strength training seemed to be a little bit of a relatively understudied kind of area, but something where you can get huge results from. So that really led me down that. And then from doing my research, we've uh, opened a um, physio and strength business in Perth, which we love doing. And Joe, that's obviously where you came and visited us. And now I primarily work with athletes, helping them achieve their goals, help them stay injury free. Um, I used to do triathlon, but I have two little kids now. I've got a two-year-old and a three-year-old. So I cannot fit that in with work and business and having kitties. And I don't like to not get the best out of myself. So I feel like the best way I can perform is to focus on one sport. I did do some open water swimming. I've done the 20K open water swim race, which I loved. But again, just a little bit too... Uh, time intensive for me so now i'm just a runner so i'm training up for dubai marathon i love running so i just run and strength train every day and i love it i work with athletes we co-founded Valeri to help athletes stay strong and perform their best and that's just what i love doing cool nick the the third part of the party well before before um before i go on what um what are you hoping for for your marathon have you got any goals oh, within within yes. your racing so i'm going to go on my of the six major journey. So I, I'm gonna try my best to get a time to qualify me for one of the majors. Believe it or not, the slowest major to qualify for is Boston, which still blows my mind. Slowest, it's still, you know, relatively hard, but um, I ideally would love to qualify for London or Berlin. So they are a 310, sub 310 or 309. So we'll try and hit that first and then try and get down and down and down and then one day sub three is my my thing and then i just want to just want to run fast as fast as i can just tick off the six majors and by the end just go yeah cool i'm, I'm on it <laughs> sounds good so yeah i'm nick um nick baldwin and kate and i have been married for five years now and uh, as I she said i didn't say that <laughs> yeah, as um as she said, we uh, we live here in Seychelles, which is where I'm from. I also used to be a professional triathlete. So like Joe said, um, Joe and I go back for quite a while. Um, I mean, Joe, when did we first start racing each other? Probably would have been give or take. 2012, years, probably. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, like when... I remember doing a very wet race in Wimbledon. In, um, in yeah, the that's where I think. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was like 2012, I think, that year. And, I think um, that was probably the start. You know, yeah, that, that was a wet day. And um, we had a really good training camp one summer as well with um, a few of the other um, local athletes over in, in Lowestoft. I remember that. That was a good, a good week or so. Um, but I stopped racing in 2021, which kind of tied in with COVID and Kate and I having our first, uh, our first son. And um, since then have really been, um, like Kate said, just trying to kind of balance everything. And I'm currently trying to focus on running as well. Um, yeah, just the most time efficient thing that we can probably get to, to do these days. So just running and strength training. And um, yeah, like Kate said, also getting ready for Dubai Marathon in January, which is it's about three months away, isn't it now? Yes. Um, so that's given us something to kind of get our teeth stuck into a little bit. It's really nice to have a goal and to have something to be working towards, I reckon, because otherwise, for me, I find training a little bit hard if there's no kind of end 
end goal in sight. Um, so it's always nice to have a race um, to be to be signed up for. Um, and uh, yeah, still very much kind of working within the triathlon community and coach a number of triathletes and a few runners as well, which is great. So really nice to kind of still feel involved heavily within triathlon. It's a sport that like primarily, even though I'm running now, triathlon's my, my kind of true love in terms of the sport. It's, um, you know, the sport that I... I enjoyed so much kind of as I was competing and kind of moving through age group into professional ranks and um, miss competing. But, you know, that running is kind of filling that um, that void a little bit for us, which is really good. And um, yeah, just looking forward to what the future future holds. Nick is Mr. Cons- uh, how do I put this? Mr. Perfect Pacer. Like he, well, he won Ironman Philippines and I remember, so Nick wouldn't, oh, I'm going to jinx it now, but he generally doesn't blow at the back end of a race. If you see Nick racing, I've, one, it I've looks like a, he's jogging few, yeah. when he's going <laughs> fast, which is frustrating, but he is always good at pacing. So if you see Nick at marathons or if he gets back into triathlon, you always pace it well. Like in Philippines, I remember we were there and Belinda Granger said to me, I'm going to go watch Cam Brown overtake Nick for first place because that's the one that Nick won. And I was like, it's not going to happen. Nick will not blow. And sure enough, you didn't. You held on and you won. Yeah, so that Nick was, is... it, yeah that, I mean, that was um, that was a case of running scared. I remember that well. Yeah, actually. I think I had, I had is, eight minutes. Is that really what Belinda said, though? Did Belinda really yes. say that to you? <laughs> and, you know, she said it out loud and I think she kind of forgot I was Nick's wife, right? And she's like, oh, oops. <laughs> and I was like, it's okay, don't worry, because I think a lot of people were thinking it, right? They were oh, yeah. probably you like... Can't, you can't blame her I mean, or anyone It's, it's Cam it. Brown as well. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, you know, it was good. And I think everyone thought he was going to chase you. And he came out blistering hot pace well. As well. to be fair... He well, always he, starts off fast, Cam Brown. He does. <laughs> like, and then Nick was just like... Doo, doo, doo. Well, I remember having, I think it was about eight minute lead on him off the mm. bike. And by halfway, I'm pretty sure it was down to Three? less, I was going to say less than two maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I think he oh, really? kind of caught up to within 60 seconds at one point. So mm. fair enough, everyone was probably thinking it was a matter yeah. of time. But And yeah, I remember you asking me for splits day. and I was like, I'm going to lie. I'm going to tell him Cam Brown's a bit further back than he is because otherwise he's going to go, oh my goodness. But I remember then when Cam Brown dropped back and I was like, it's okay, just go, you've got this. But what's your, just quickly, what's your goal for Dubai? Uh, so my goal for Dubai is a little, I'm a little unsure at the moment specifically what kind of time I'll be in the ballpark of, but my overall goal within marathon running is to get as close as possible to a low 225, which would be re- the record for the Seychelles um, national men's marathon record time. So that's kind of my over, overall goal. I don't know if Dubai might kind of be a touch too early for that, but I'm going to give it my best shot. So um, we'll see. We'll see how close I can get. Whether I'll be in the ballpark or not, I'm not too sure. But I'll give it a. I'll give it a red hot crack. Well, it's so hard to know how we're going training in Seychelles because it's just like 30 degrees every day and 80 plus percent humidity. So I was going to say that. Yeah, it's just so right. hard, and uh, which will be great for the topic we're going to chat about in future episodes of, of heat training, but it's, it would be really cool to know how is that going to transfer over because we're both thinking ahead to Dubai and we're like marathon effort, but it's just so, it's so hard to know. It's going to be such a big boost when you do go to somewhere cooler like after training in like, the humid like, conditions. It's, um, it's like the reverse show, I guess, of you kind of, let's say, like training in the UK, like gearing up for a hot, humid race and then mm. kind of traveling over there and you're kind of thinking, how how is my performance in splits going to transfer over and how do you need to adjust pace? We're going in yeah. the direction. Oh, gosh, yeah. We should but get Joe to come visit us, go for a run with him. It'll be the first and only time in my life I could maybe keep up. <laughs> yeah, we'll make sure one... Yeah, 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 straight, straight just off the of... plane. <laughs> But one of the surprising things that people do actually say about the UK is when they come over, like, because Tim came from Australia and when he looks at the temperature and he's like 22, 23, that doesn't sound very hot, you know, or it says 27. But it is, it always feels so much hotter than what it says when it is warm. And because there's no air con and it's like so humid, because the humidity here is like 80%, isn't it? It's just that when it's cold it doesn't really matter but once you get like 25 degrees and you get like 80 percent humidity it actually feels pretty grim and you can't escape it because no houses have air con or anything like that so in the summer you go into a house and it can be warmer than going than outside 
So it is pretty, not, it not can be pretty hot. Yeah. It just yeah. blows my mind because in Australia, it's like you would die if you didn't have no, air con. So in Joe's <laughs> fairness, the UK 25 is hotter than an Australian 25. It's like, no, it definitely, it's way, it feels way, way hotter than what it does in uh, when you go <laughs> to <laughs> other <laughs> countries. <Huh>? Well, <laughs> that could have something to do with it. Well, but no, I, I hear what you're saying, Joe. I'm, I'm with you. When I experience it one day, Joe, I'll let you know. Yeah, we've had 25 when we visited the UK before, sure. Okay, but I don't remember it feeling like really hard. I remember it's going not... over there and having a jacket on and all of Nick's family laughing at me. And they're you, all had scar- in... you had a scarf on. I had a scarf on. on yeah. You are probably there in autumn. You're probably there in autumn. You need to give it a chance. And you went to Wales as well. Like, <laughs> like the, yeah, so the wettest like, oh, part. It's quite cold. <laughs> and they're like in their t-shirts, like scarf, jacket. So speaking of heats and the extreme heats of the UK, then that is going to be one of our topics. We're going to have guest speakers on here. We've got um, matter experts. So for the heat one in particular, uh, we've got some good researchers in the field. Um, That's going to be one of our topics. And we're going to bring to you so much helpful information to help your training. So all sorts from biomechanics, injury prevention, heat versus altitude, super shoes, their effect on biomechanics and running injuries, um, swimming performance. Joe's going to give his swim performance tips, isn't he? No, sorry, Joe. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> that was really savage. Um, <laughs> what were some of our other topics we, we've got coming up? Well, basically anything that we think that people talk about, there's like either performance enhancing or tips and tricks to improve your performance. And then Kate's going to give it the research from the more scientific side of it. And then me and Nick are going to question it and talk about it from the more practical side of it and from an athlete's point of view so as we go along we will probably uncover more areas that we can talk about and uh, we'll go into more detail but there there's some of the uh, areas that we're going to start off with and um, let you guys decide whether or not you think they'll be beneficial and it can help your performance or if you don't think it will because I'm sure we'll probably myth bust a few of the uh, topics that you hear people talk about and uh, I'm sure that you'll also get a lot of tips from some of the stuff that we talk about that can help you with your training and uh, performances out on the race course. Yeah, 100%. And if there's ideas that any of the listeners have of potential topics or things you'd like to hear about or like to hear a little bit of research um, and find out whether there is research kind of either for or against a certain um, topic or consideration, please let us know, like comment away and like we can go away and look at it and um, yeah, discuss it here. And like Joe said, yeah, Joe and I will kind of give the practical athlete, athlete side of things and Kate very much approaches it from more of an academic standpoint, don't you, and kind of show uh, illustrates what the research is showing yeah definitely because you know research can support one thing but it's really important you know for it to be practically applied and sometimes research can support things you think that's just not going to happen in practice and that's where having the three of us together uh to take you through that journey on how to apply these things and what works and what doesn't is important and also just to be here for some giggles along the way as well like we like to keep things nice and light-hearted nick and joe will make sure that anything nerdy that i talk about is uh easily changed into layman's terms because i do go down a bit of a rabbit hole so yeah for sure we'll definitely yeah make this uh helpful uh and get the most out of yourself as an athlete sounds good all right well we'll look forward to talking about um many of those topics in future episodes awesome